All right, today we're going to convert video files, do a little transcoding, maybe uh, convert a video file to something that you can watch on your mobile device, your iPad, that sort of thing. And we're going to do that right now on Spaffrey's Cup of Linux. Alright, let's begin. Um, sorry I didn't get anything uploaded earlier. I haven't been feeling too chipper today. But here it is, um, Handbrake. And uh, this is uh, used for transcoding and uh, uh, converting your video files to other formats that you can use on um, different little players and that sort of thing. Okay. But there were, I don't even know where to begin with this. I really don't use this program that much. I've tried it before and I wasn't really too pleased with the results, but I'm going to try a few. I've got a short little video clip and I'm going to try uh, some different settings. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think outside the box a little bit here on this episode and see uh, just what kind of results I can get. Okay, first let's pull in a source file and I'm going to go to my desktop here. And I have my intro movie. Uh, this is the intro you just saw before I rolled the credits. So we're going to select this. All right, and it's going to scan the video, and you can see that this is the uh, it's at 1274 by 710 dimensions. And now we can uh, do a number of things with this. Okay, first in our file menu, we have the source. We can do a single title. We can choose the destination that this file is going to be uh, placed in. So why don't we do that? I'm going to tell this I want this to go into documents. That would be a good place for this to go and then save. All right, now we have some choices that we can have here. We can make this an MP4 or a Matroska MKV file here. All right. There's also some queuing options too, so you can add additional videos and have this encode multiple files at one time. I'm not going to really do that in this exercise. And then we can also go into show queue picture settings, activity window, and then there is a help and a guide that you can look at. Okay, well why don't we go into the picture settings and see what options it gives us here. Okay, and then at this point, if we wish, we can crop the video if we want to. For instance, we can crop the top a little bit. Let me see if this shows us live, uh, the cropping. Okay, for some reason this isn't allowing me to do that. Hmm. Let's take out auto crop. Ah, now we can do some cropping effects here. So now, if I want, I can hide my GovC view window here. Okay, very good. And then um, we'll do a bottom crop as well. Maybe even move this a little bit. Okay, very good. And then we can even um, do a right crop.
All right, and then like what you do in an algebra equation, what you do on one side, you gotta do to the other. So let's go ahead and start left cropping this. Probably should have filmed this in widescreen, but that's okay. All right, I like how that looks. So now we can close this. We've got our uh, dimensions that we want. And then we have some presets here that we can work with. Universal, iPod, iPhone, and iPod Touch, iPhone 4, iPad, Apple TV, Apple TV 2, we have a normal profile, a high profile, and then we have legacy options as well, classic, Apple TV legacy, iPhone legacy, iPod legacy. But it looks like we lost our picture settings. Okay, now let's look at some options here. All right, and this really doesn't give us anything further that we can do. So, pretty much we can make this web optimized. We can optimize the layout of the MP4, MP4 file for progressive download. This allows the player to initiate playback before downloading the entire file. This is really good if you're uploading videos to YouTube. This way you have less of a wait time for processing because it is already uh, it is already encoded for this. I don't do that though. I actually upload the highest quality video to YouTube and let them go ahead and process it. I tend to have better results that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at our video options. We can choose which codec we want to use. H.264 actually does a really swell job, uh, but you can also uh, choose MPEG-4 or FFmpeg. You can choose the same frame rate as source or you can switch to an NTSC film standard, uh, a PAL standard in Europe, or an NTSC video standard. Okay, also if you run a two-pass encode, you're going to have a better quality video than you would with just a single pass. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do a two-pass encode. We're going to do the MP4 format. All right, and so that will make an M4V file, and then we just press the start button. We'll go ahead and scan the file and it will go through it twice. It's doing pass one. Now this clip is only 17 seconds, so it isn't going to take much time to encode this video. However, um, if you're talking about encoding a video file that is um, a half hour to two hours long, you better pack a lunch because you're gonna have a long wait. All right, it looks like it's gone through pass one now, and then we will wait for pass two, and then we'll see what kind of quality we get with this. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my documents folder now. All right. We'll go to that in a moment so that we can view the output. Now, the intro movie file, obviously, we're not going to get a good view on this because I've got several resources running and it's going to play a little bit choppy, and they usually do because I have them in, in such high quality. 
but once I bring it in to OpenShot Video Editor and I render out the final product for YouTube, I can pretty much get a good view on it. Okay, it's finished. Let's go have a look at it now. All right. And quite a bit smaller than the original movie, which was 32.8 megs. It knocked it down to 3.5 megs. Let's see what we get with this, shall we? All right, today we're going to convert video files, do a little transcoding, maybe... Uh, convert a video file to something that you can watch on, on your mobile device, your iPad, that sort of thing. We're going to do that right now on Smadry's Cup of Legs. Alright, now, that looked pretty good. Which is surprising because usually it doesn't do as good of a job there. But why don't we go ahead and see what difference we're going to get if we do this with just a single pass. We'll allow this to encode. And then we're going to do the two code impact, uh, two code, or the two pass encoding with the turbo first pass and see what kind of results we get there. My only complaint with this program is that it doesn't really give you a whole lot of options with this. Now, personally, when I do transcoding, I use a Windows program that I have running natively in Linux called WinABI. And I like how that does conversions because now I can actually take videos that I made in Flash uh, or Swift files, if you will, and I can actually convert them from Swift or FLV over to a usable format that I can pull into OpenShot Video Editor. And I tend to like the results with that better because, you know, there, there are so many more options available to me. Okay, now we have intro to M4V. And uh, let's have a look at this and see what kind of quality we get here. All right, today we're going to convert video files, do a little transcoding, maybe uh, convert a video file. I'm not seeing much of a difference here. Mobile device iPad, that sort of thing. We're going to do that right now on Spadry's Cup of Legs. All right, one more time for the Gipper here. We're going to do a two pass encode with a turbo first pass. Now, this time though, why don't we reduce the bit rate? Let's say um, you want to uh, target an audience on the web that doesn't have a high-speed internet connection. So let's go with a, uh, let's do a 700K. We're gonna do two pass and a turbo first pass, and let's see what we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the same file name, though. And we'll go ahead and overwrite that and see what we get here. And look, it's actually going through the first pass quite quickly. Interesting. I don't know why I'm getting good results this time around. Last time I tried to use this to do some encoding, it didn't really do a good job, but I don't know. Maybe it was the original file format that I was working with. 
That is weird. Oh, I know what it was. Actually, I was using a Matroska video file that my screen capture was using. And for some reason, it just didn't handle it that well, and I don't know why that is. But the intro movie that we are uh, encoding right now actually is an output from OpenShot video because, as you can see, I have a new green, green wall behind me, and uh, I wanted to have a little video background in place of my uh, gnarly-looking green screen. So that's what that's all about. All right, so let's have a look and see what our quality is here. All right. And still, for a 700K file, this actually looks all right. And it's half the size, half the size. All right. Okay, well, I hope that answered everyone's questions about Handbrake. Um, there are other encoders out there you can try if, you, if it doesn't give you the results you're after. I'm really surprised with the result that I'm seeing today because, it, as I said in the past, I wasn't really pleased with the results this program gave. All right, and if you thought this was useful, please hit like and subscribe. Also, catch me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can also visit my blog and shout me a coffee. Lord knows I can use some caffeine. <laughs> and um, I've got more stuff headed your way. I've still got some, uh, some Linux distributions I'm going to be reviewing. And also, uh, if you haven't seen my weekend update and you are looking to get a game running in Wine, I am still looking for people to make some suggestions as long as... There is a demo available for the game, and it doesn't require a dual-core processor, and I've got a 2.33 gigahertz single-core processor with uh, 8 gigs of RAM, and I'm running an ATI HD uh, 4000 type video card. So um, I'm going to uh, keep an eye out and see if anybody suggests any games, and if not, then I'm just going to go with my regular original lineup. For that so stick around for that I know you guys have been waiting for this so um, I can't wait to uh, get started on that but I'm still looking to see if there's a few other suggestions that I can add to that mix all right well thank you for watching we'll see you next time mm -hmm.